dear students welcome to my channel topic of this video is t test to check variable significance for linear regression in this video basic concept about the t test for linear regression is covered and exercises related with the significance of variable now let us start in linear regression we check the relationship between the dependent variable and independent variable whenever we conduct a linear regression we are interested in determining whether the relationship between the dependent variable and independent variable is statistically significant t test are used to examine whether a specific variable in the model is statistically significant we use t test to determine regression slope significance a variable is statistically significant if it statistically if it is significantly affects the model accuracy and has a strong relationship with the dependent variable now let us start with the exercise in this exercise total four records are there x is the independent variable y is dependent variable and four records are 1324 from the linear regression we found the equation y is equal to 1.5 plus 1.5x where this 1.5 is intercept while this 1.5 is slope now two questions are there first find beta 1 is significant or not and second beta 1 is positively correlated or not to calculate the t values we require to require this intermediate calculation first is first we calculate the y cap that is nothing but the predicted value of y by using this equation so we put the values of x into this equation and we are getting the y cap after that we will find out the residual error that is nothing but the actual value and predicted value so first we find out the difference between them square them and after that summation is nothing but 0.5 0.5 to do the calculation of t test we require the uh, standard deviation or variance with respect to our input values therefore we are calculating the x bar which is nothing but the average of x which is equal to 2 and after that we are making subtract the each value from the average to get the variance and summation is equal to 2 so all these two values all these three values we are going to use in a t test now first we start with the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis no relationship exists between the beta 1 and output and that's why beta 1 is not significant this is our null hypothesis alternative hypothesis relationship exists between the beta 1 and output and that's why beta 1 is significant now null hypothesis is beta 1 is equal to 0 and alternative hypothesis is beta 1 is not equal to 0 so as it is not equal to 0 it become the total test value uh, equation for t test is statistic minus parameter divided by standard deviation of statistic that is nothing but the standard error this statistic is nothing but that what we calculated it from the regression from the regression we calculate the slope which is equal to 1.5 and this parameter that is nothing but for population which we mention in our null hypothesis where we mention this beta 1 is equal to 0 so numerator becomes 1.5 minus 0 divided by standard deviation of statistics or standard error now we will check the formula for standard error now first here we require to calculate the degree of freedom also to check the t table now total number of records are 4 number of k is equal to 1 that is nothing but number of independent variable degree of freedom is n minus k minus 1 which is equal to n minus 2 which is equal to 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 now numerator is 1.5 minus 0 this is nothing but the beta 1 we found in linear regression which is equal to 1.5 this we assume that it is not statistically significant according to null hypothesis that's why the value is 0 divided by the s of beta 1 that is statistics of beta 1 the formula of statistics of beta 1 or standard error is given like this now we just put the value this value we already calculated n minus 2 is nothing but 2 and this also we already calculated in a table so we are just putting the value and we are getting the uh, standard error as 0.353 and we put this value and we are getting the t value as 4.25 now we require to check with the t table now degree of freedom is equal to 2 so we require to check this 4.25 value where lies now 4.25 value lies between the 2.9 and 4.3 now this is nothing but the confidence between the two tail which is equal to 0.10 0.05 
now here for this example we check in detail at which level it actually map to find the exact confidence interval the significance level 0.05 and 0.06 because from here we roughly get the estimate that the value lies between 0.10 and 0.05 now significance level is 0.05 and 0.06 and that is nothing but the confidence interval of 95 and 94 percent and for that we are getting the t value as plus or minus 4.30 and plus or minus 3.90 actually our answer is 4.25 now here uh, as for this is 4.30 we require to take at a lower level so this particular calculated value having the confidence of 94 percent because we require to select the low range so here we are getting the exactly range that this whatever the calculation from t test having the confidence of 94 percent to find out the range that where this beta 1 values can uh, span the values of range the formula is beta 1 plus or minus t alpha by 2 into standard error now this beta 1 is 1.5 now we will calculate for 95 and 94 or 1.5 1.5 plus or minus here t alpha by 2 here we are getting exactly 95 and 94 but it is exactly matched with the 94 but we are just checking for 95 and 94 also now here this 0.353 is nothing but our standard error and for 95 we are getting this exactly i will tell with this 95 this is nothing but the two tail test and for 95 we are getting this value as 0.05 that is 4.30 so we are multiplying this 4.30 and for 95 we are getting 3.90 so here we are getting the range so for 95 confidence interval we are getting the 3.02 to minus 0 0.0179 now here you check this interval carefully here 0 is coming in this interval because the values vary from minus to plus and 0 is coming here and we are using this zero in our null hypothesis so this range is not perfect now if we check for 94 percent we can find out that if the range is coming on the positive side that is uh, 0 0.1233 to 2.88 and in this range zero is not included and zero is included in our null hypothesis so this is the perfect confidence value so 95 percent is a perfect confidence null hypothesis the explanation for this uh, the null hypothesis include the zero for 95 percent in this range zero is included but for 95 percent of confidence zero is not included in this range therefore 94 percent confidence interval is perfect beta 1 parameter values having range from 2.88 to 0.1233 now second problem here we require to check whether this parameter is positively correlated or not slope is positive therefore as x increases y is naturally increases we can prove this by one tail hypothesis test now here we require to check the uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for null hypothesis we will keep that that beta 1 is less than or equal to 0 and alternative hypothesis beta 1 is greater than 0 because in alternative hypothesis we are making claim that it is positively correlated as it is less than or equal to 0 and greater than it is one tail test or right tail test now we already found that the significance level is 0 0.06 that is nothing but the confidence of 94 and at this value of 94% uh, confidence we are getting the value for t test is 4.25 now value of t test should be greater than plus or minus 3.90 now here we are taking only the positive interval and as our value is 4.25 which is greater than 3.90 so it is satisfied therefore it proves that parameter beta 1 is positively correlated so we are rejecting the null hypothesis here also now the more analysis now here we imagine that our regression algorithm is not perfect or independent variable is significant and it generates the following equation actually for this data the perfect equation is 1.5 plus 1.5x but we are just making this value as 2 and we are just deviating from actually answer when we use instead of 1.5x 2x we are getting the value of t is 1.79 
the rest of the calculations are same so we just require to put these two value and we are making the calculation so we are getting the value t is equal to 1.79 when we take the 1.79 and when we check our t table we can easily find out that now our confidence is 0.32.20 so it comes between the and if we check exactly value it comes between the 79 to 78 percent now here we can check that even if our regression algorithm is wrong or the variables are not statistically significant our confidence interval uh, drastically becomes less now here instead of 1.5x if we if we are using 2x our confidence interval from 95 to 94 it will directly go to 79 to 78 so uh, calculated t value is 1.79 therefore 78 percent confidence because we always select the low range because in calculation we are getting the 1.79 and here uh, 1.79 so it is a 78 percent confidence now again we check that again we assume that our regression algorithm is not perfect or independent variable is significant and in any case we generate the equation which is equal to 1.5 plus 3x now original is 1.5 but now we changes to 3 when we changes to t we uh, changes to 3 we again calculate all the values of t and we are getting here the 0.94 now we can easily find out that t value is getting reduced that is from 4.21 point and now 0.94 now if we check the t table again we can find out that this 0.94 value lie between the 0.8 to 0.1.0 that is between the 0.50 to 0.40 that is nothing but the confidence interval of 40 percent to 50 percent and if we find out the exactly range we are getting this range 56 to 55 and as our value is 0.94 so it will lie on the low range that is nothing but the 55 percent of the confidence now you can easily find out that when our re linear regression algorithm is not correct at that time our tree value uh, or confidence interval reduces drastically and we can make the conclusion that whatever the equation found by the linear regression is not accurate or we require to change the algorithm or modify the algorithm so this is nothing but all about the analysis of t test in detail in next video I am going to cover more problems on t-test for simple linear regression. Thank you.